The Whitney Reynolds Show is supported by Reach Out Community Center. Reach out and help one child at a time. Hello, I'm Whitney Reynolds and we're talking about diabetes today. What is it? How do you get it? And is there any solutions? You're watching The Whitney Reynolds Show. Gail Meyerson is a diabetes nurse educator from North Shore University Health System, and she is also a volunteer for the American Diabetes Association. She is here to educate us on diabetes and nutrition. Gail, thanks so much for coming on and breaking down diabetes, because sometimes people look at it as just this big, overwhelming cloud, but really it breaks down to four types? Yes, it does. Can we go through those types? Absolutely. Type 1, type 2, prediabetes, and gestational diabetes. What do all of them look like? Because they're all very different, yet a, common, a few common denominators. Yes. Type 1 diabetes used to be called juvenile diabetes because mostly children and young adults are diagnosed, but you can get it at any age. The body stops making insulin, and therefore these individuals need to inject the insulin back into their body in order to survive. Type 1, is this when you hear parents say, my child got diagnosed, they have to live with this for the rest of their life? Very very fearful. It can be, yes, and that's where I come in. I'm a certified diabetes educator, and I help teach these families how to cope. Yeah, because it's very doable, but you will have it for the rest of your life. Yes. It's just coping with it. Absolutely. Okay, so type two. Type two diabetes is the most common form of this disease. Uh, people are still making insulin, but not enough. They're at a permanent deficit. Um, and over the course of their lifetime, that deficit will grow, so the need for medication generally grows with them as well. They're not making, um, they're not using their insulin very efficiently. This is called insulin resistance and their liver, one of the things that our liver does is it produces a type of sugar that when we get stressed it releases sugar into the system so we have energy to deal with whatever's stressing us. But people with diabetes, it's overproduced and that also helps blood sugars go up as well. Now is this type, is this the type where doctors warn you, hey, you're getting close, you can maybe do a few things, change your diet to watch out for it? Yes, that's pre-diabetes, where blood sugars start to get elevated, but not to the point of diabetes. And so okay. type two can, in most cases, be prevented or maybe even delayed. Wow, okay, so that is something that your yearly exam, would they be able to test your blood and say, hey, you're on the line? Mm -hmm. Fasting blood sugar is one of a, a slew of standard tests in a um, routine uh, blood draw that the doctors draw and they'll see if fasting blood sugars go up. Is there a few symptoms that people like if they were feeling is there symptoms to diabetes? I was trying to think and sometimes people feel like their blood sugar spikes and it's low. Is that diabetes or is that just blood sugar? It's blood sugar and it could be diabetes. The symptoms for um, diabetes are you start to urinate a lot more, you're very thirsty, um, your skin may get more dry and itchy. Um, you're starting to think I have it. No, 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 no. <laughs> okay. <Don't worry. laughs> okay. Um, people are hungry, even though they're eating. Um, they, their vision can get very blurry. Um, cuts and sores don't heal very easily. They're more prone to get infections, colds, flus. Um, people with um, type one diabetes may be eating but losing weight. Um, and also in type two diabetes, um, people may complain or notice that they have tingling in their hands or feet. Oh wow. Yeah, do older, are, are there certain like ethnicities and like age that are determining factors as well? Absolutely. Um, there are certain ethnic cultures that have a much higher incin incidence of diabetes. That's African Americans, Hispanic Latinos, Native American Indians, Asian Pacific Islanders, and Native, um, excuse me, Asian Indians as well. Um, the American Diabetes ha uh, Association has um, um, a lot of um, information uh, for these ethnic cultures, in fact, um, live empowered and poor to family, familia, for the Hispanic communities, um, a, a lot of information. These ethnicities that are impacted, is it mainly type two? Yes. Okay, what was the last one that you had mentioned? Gestational diabetes. Okay, so what is that one? That is a temporary form of diabetes in pregnancy. Oh, temporary. Yes. Okay, so that is the one that you could technically 
have for a little bit and then it's gone. Yes, but these women who have had gestational diabetes are at much greater risk of developing type 2 diabetes a few short years after. Is there um, a way to know that you have this? Is there a certain test? Mm -hmm. Is it what's, what's performed naturally whenever you're pregnant? Yes, it's, okay. it's usually a standard part of prenatal care. Um, it's an oral glucose tolerance test. Um, the women go in fasting, their blood is drawn, they're given a lovely sweet drink to um, consume, and their blood sugar is tested hourly for three hours. Wow, so there's a lot of different cases of diabetes. How many people are impacted? On a whole, there's about 26 million people in the United States with diabetes, with a quarter of them that don't even know that they have it. Wow, the American Diabetes Association, what do you guys do? You do research, advocacy, Tell us about it. We empower people um, with education, with resources. Um, we give them advocacy if they're being discriminated against. Um, we also do a lot of research on all types of diabetes, and we fundraise. So most of the people that work or serve with the American Diabetes Association, do they have someone that they know or maybe they have diabetes that's impacted? Probably, yes. Okay, how can people find out more about you guys? Well, the American Diabetes Association has a wonderful website. And if you had to recommend someone that might be on the fence thinking they have one of these types, or a parent that's curious if their kid might be suffering from type 1, what would you recommend? Well, they can always check out the information on the American Diabetes Association website, but definitely talk to your doctor. There's a growing epidemic of diabetes in our country. How do you propose we control this issue? I think we can control the issue by issuing awareness um, through schools, businesses, and the local communities. You start with ground roots and you build up um, with um, different campaigns, definitely have motiv motivational speakers such as you, um, just to or raise awareness in the community. Well, I think education first and foremost is definitely what we need to look at as far as raising awareness. Once um, the public is educated about what the diseases they can really tackle, um, uh, solutions and find uh, uh, ways for people to control the disease and prevent preventative measures from that point on. I think a good way to raise awareness is just have spokespeople talk about it, have it be on the news, on TV, and then a good way to fix it is just make people aware of what causes it, whether it's type 1 or type 2, if, you know, diet, exercise, and other things that can help lower your risk for it as well. Well, as a nurse, I always tell my patients to keep a healthy lifestyle, eat a lot of balanced fruits and vegetables, grains, um, try to limit the starches and the sweets, um, and exercise is the biggest thing. Um, kids nowadays are sitting and watching video game or playing video games and watching TV. Get outside, be active. Um, I recommend for children, like the indoor gyms, stuff like that, um, just making sure that you're living a balanced, healthy lifestyle so that you have a lower risk for diabetes. Well, like with anything else, knowledge is power. Uh, what's really important to know about diabetes is a lot of people think it's sugar and controlling desserts and fatty type of foods are the answer for diabetes, when the real answer to it is carbohydrates. It's the potatoes, it's the flour, and the breads. Those are the things that turn into sugars that cause most of the problems that we have with controlling the blood sugar in our bloods with diabetes. So it's being knowledge and having that information so that you can eat sensibly and um, not have that create uh, the problem for you. I do think that um, learning more about the disease is very helpful. People are starting to understand that uh, diabetes is not just for obese people, but some people are born with it. Um, it has to do with diet and uh, body chemistry. So I definitely think uh, researching about the subject would help uh, the general public. By raising awareness using social media, Twitter, Facebook, um, young people today are always on those sites using that, those apps and by hitting those specific places, you raise awareness using that. It is now time for your social sizzle. I am here with Jennifer McPhee, who's a pharmacist by day and also co-chairing a wellness expo <laughs> by night. Uh, the expo is a big focus this year on wellness, so there'll be 
fitness demos, there's gonna be Zumba instructors, tons of cooking demonstrations, even some food that are non-cooking demonstrations for snacks, lots of speakers for different types of diabetes, whether it's type one or type two. So there's a little bit for everyone. And this is the annual expo for the American Diabetes Association. Correct. How many people come to this? Last year we had 11,000 people. This year we're shooting for 14,000. So we're getting some local celebrities to come as well. You can register online ahead of time. There's parking available. So really it's a free event that you can't miss. You guys are also on the World Wide Web. Let's talk about Twitter and diabetes. What is your handle? It's AM Diabetes IL, so American Diabetes Illinois. What's great about Twitter, and we talk about this a lot on the social sizzle, is a way to connect people with a common denominator. And so we talked about some hashtags that's going on for diabetes. A simple one is hashtag diabetes. What's in that couple more? Nutrition, healthy habits are some of the main ones. Facebook, you also have a page as well. We are ADA Chicago is Facebook and also ADA Chicago for YouTube. So on the YouTube page, there's also cooking demonstrations? There's demonstrations for cooking, um, exercise tips, information from doctors, a lot, wide variety of information. Wonderful. Well, I would challenge our viewers, if you have good tips on all that, to tweet out to you guys. So that way you can retweet and that way connect everyone a little bit more. That would be great. You also do a newsletter for type two. We have a program specifically targeting type 2 diabetes. So it's for people that are either newly diagnosed or just trying to get back in charge of their diabetes. And there's a bunch of components. There's a texting component where it can text you to remind you of medication. Or if you have an appointment, there's an e-newsletter. You get five packets through the mail. You get a um, subscription to our diabetes forecast for the year. And then it also connects you locally for different events like the ADA Expo that would be going on. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for coming on and getting social with us. Thanks for having me. This is part one of the social sizzle. Let's take a look at part two. We all knew and loved former Cubs player Ron Santo. He struggled most of his life with diabetes, and his wife is on the show today to talk about the foundation they started. Welcome to the show, Vicki. Hi, Whitney. So nice to talk to you again. I wish you could be here with us in sunny Arizona, 87 degrees, but I'm sure it's coming your way. Just be patient. Tell us about your foundation. Uh, we started the Ron and Vicki Santo Diabetic Alert Foundation a year ago. And the purpose of the foundation is to raise awareness with the public so they understand that diabetic alert dogs can literally save lives by detecting the blood sugar changes as they start to occur. So a diabetic who doesn't get their symptoms, sometimes they drop so low by the time they realize they're in trouble, that they're really in trouble. So these dogs, as the sugars start to change, will alert by barking or just fussing around until the diabetic takes care of the problem. So we really want to raise awareness and let people know that these dogs are available. And especially for young children who really don't understand what their symptoms are. They know they don't feel well, but they don't really know why. And it's probably very difficult for the parent who has to test their child every two hours during the night for fear that they'll drop low. So this is what we're trying to accomplish is to raise funds to help people with the medical and financial need. Now, Vicki, how did it get started? Well, Whitney, the reason we started the foundation is because I found, I saw the need for it, but not until after Ron passed away. And I had a dog, we both had a dog named Joker, who when Ron was alive, would come and get me if he was having a low sugar but I didn't realize what the dog was doing. And so I would kind of shoo him out of the way and he would not leave me alone until I would follow him and go into the other room and find Ron was with such a low sugar that he couldn't help himself. So after Ron passed away, Joker passed away too, within five weeks and died of kidney failure, which is what took Ron's life. And I just, there had to be a message here. There was just, I, I couldn't just let that coincidence go by. So I went 
to a rescue. I got a dog that I have was training as a service dog. And I happened to be in a Best Buy and a young man who worked there said to me, oh, isn't it great the way they train those dogs to de detect high and low blood sugars? I was flabbergasted. I had no idea that this could be done. And it, it just, it just something that compelled me because I saw this happen. I saw my dog do that for Ron. I know it works. And so I just felt like I just needed to share this with people and, and see how many people we could help. You know, Whitney, one of the reasons I started this foundation is to continue the legacy that Ron had started. He was so genuine and loving to other people, and it was so important to him to help other diabetics. There's not a, a call that ever came in then people would say, my son was just diagnosed or my daughter, and he would have them come to the ballpark and come up to the booth and sit down with that child and let them know it's going to be okay. You have to embrace the disease and manage it. And it was his, it was his uh, compassion for other people and not wanting them to have to go through what he went through that really inspired me to start this foundation and continue his legacy. This is one of the amazing things about these dogs. And I, we've uh, placed a couple of dogs already with young children in school. And there's been several incidences when they put the dog in the cage while the child went to lunch and the dog would alert. And the teachers were wondering what was wrong. And it turned out that three classrooms down, there was a young diabetic in another classroom who had been diagnosed, whose sugars were dropping, and this dog was alerting to the other child. So they're amazing, they're amazing animals. It's not just the diabetic that they are, that they're paired with, but any diabetic in, within their scent range, if they're dropping, the dog will alert. What are the foundation's plans for the future? <laughs> Well, that's a good question, Whitney. We're just going, you know, we're starting slow, we're starting small. And to be honest with you, the, my goal, if we could have gotten one or two dogs out the first year, I would have been thrilled. And as it is right now, we have five dogs that are assigned. And our first dog is going to, he'll be delivered this July, and he's going to the son of a Chicago firefighter. And the boy was diagnosed at nine years old with diabetes but he also has Down syndrome. So he doesn't understand what his symptoms are. And this young man has just graduated from high school. He's in a special Olympic program and his dog Tyson will be given to him the 17th of July. And he will be able to, it will open up a whole new world for, the, for Logan and for his family who literally cannot leave him because he doesn't understand what symptoms are. Well, Chicago sure loves you and the mission you're on. We miss Ron and thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for having me on. Well, now that we've gotten social, it's time to get out there and hit the grocery store and find out what healthy foods we should put on the A-list. Well, we've been talking about diabetes today on the show and brought in celebrity chef yep. Judson Todd Allen, yes. who actually, you were pre-diabetic. Yes. You were, is that what it's called? You yes. Were... So I was predisposed to diabetes, um, and I was borderline diabetic. So I was at my highest weight at 350 pounds, and I had to do something about that. I was able to lose over 150 pounds, but, it, you know, it's, it's, it's not easy. And for me, it was retraining my palate to appreciate flavors that were healthier. And that's so, what they call you, the architect of flavor. The architect of flavor. So one misconception is that in order to cook healthy, it is expensive. That is wrong. It's wrong. It is very wrong. You know, you can get some really good quality produce, uh, fresh ingredients, and it doesn't have to cost a lot of money. I'm going to introduce to you and your viewers one of my favorite white bean chicken chili. Ooh. And it's like the perfect one pot wonder. You know, it's something that I grew up on as a kid, uh, you know, different variations, but 
uh, my mom introduced it to me because it could stretch with the family. You know, right. she could do a big pot of it and feed us for like an entire week, you know, and we were happy. And it's so. under $20. And it's under $20. That is incredible. Do you so have some good. of the ingredients in here? Or I do, we- I do, and, and, and I can talk about them. You know, one thing that I like to do with my white bean chicken chili is put, of course, white beans in there, which are really good when we talk for diabetics, you know? Right. Yep. Um, another different thing that I like to use in the chili which is really cool, cauliflower. Mm. And I know a lot of people are like, cauliflower and chili. Yeah, a lot of kids are probably turning off the TV right now. I know, I know, but but check this out. The cool thing that you can do with this, uh, my mother used to put heavy cream in the chili to make it thick. And I have the cream in here and that is not okay. And, and you know, that's not okay. But especially when you can find an alternative. So what I do is I'll take this cauliflower and I'll roast it, and I'll roast it with the white beans, a little Ooh. garlic and onion put in the blender, blend it together with a little bit of chicken stock, and it gives this cream. So it's like heavy cream, but not really heavy cream. And it's uh, fat, you know, it's low in fat, low in calorie, and great for diabetic. Okay, let's get started. Right so being chicken chicken. What all do we have here? So we've got our ingredients here. And what I like to do, first of all, is I like to separate everything out. Yeah. It just makes things run quickly. I know and I'm, when I'm in the kitchen, I don't have a lot of time to mess around and play around. I like to get to work. So what I like to do is just take a little bit of the olive oil and add my seasonings to the olive oil. So I'll take a little bit of cumin. That smells good too. Yeah, and that's the essence of a chili. A little bit of chili powder. And then we're gonna add our garlic. So what I like to do is I like to take this and I'm gonna put it on heat, all right? And that way what we're doing is we're cooking the spices. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add my onion, my red bell pepper, and my poblano pepper, which kind of gives it a little kick. Oh, I like to the that kick. that oil into those spices. Nice. Exactly. Something that the kids can do, something that, again, stretches with the family. Now, what I did over here in this pot was I added a little bit of that uh, chicken stock to it, and that's what's going to really bring that chili together. Oh, perfect. All right? And then going back to the diabetes-friendly stuff, is yep. there anything that you would totally avoid in this recipe? Again, the cool thing is we are avoiding the white flour. Okay. We're avoiding the lard and the butter. That's right. Which is good. Uh, back in the day, my mom used to use pasta in the chili. And to avoid using kind of a, a white, refined pasta, right. we're using the beans, which is, again, is very healthy. It's a good point. Just yep. a lot of replacements here, yep. which is nice. So we use the bean puree to add thickness to it but we're also adding the white beans to the uh, actual chili to add depth. I'm just, I found this friendly, family-friendly knife right here, <laughs> and I'm going to- I see you over there doing your thing. Yeah, I thought I would make the pieces a little smaller. Yeah. Now, I like it chunky, you know, that's you just do? me. You do? Oh yeah. Well, maybe I shouldn't do that. That's then. just me. Okay. Let me okay. turn this off. So we have our pot going. We have the chicken in. What are the final touches? Final oh, touches. Hot sauce? We've got our hot sauce. We've already added our um, our lemon. Mm. I like to put a little bit of parm in there. Let's do it. You know, now, a little goes that, a long way. Okay. A little goes a long way. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. So just a little bit. Yeah, a little bit of parm. And then hand me that parsley. Perfect. And it, parsley adds freshness to it. It really you know, does. It yeah. also plays with the color profile of it. Looking good. You oh, like that? It smells so good. Oh, I just like to add I a little bit of the hot now. sauce. You have dinner. This is perfect. It's simple. It's easy. Well, thank you so much for coming on today and teaching us a wonderful, diabetic-friendly meal. No this problem. Is- Perfect. So, Thank you so much. for more info on where to get this recipe, go to the Whitney Reynolds Show.com. And this was just smells good. You like it? I love it. And for more info on the American Diabetes Association, you can also find it on our website. We'll see you right back here.
The Whitney Reynolds Show is supported by Reach Out Community Center. Reach out and help one child at a time.